So this is it. Then we define now. Yeah, and then if we define this model, we have the compile. We need now the data generator. And we have a data generator on our training data, and we have a data generator in the parameter function we defined beforehand for our validation data. So two data generator. And we use both here when we say model.fit, the training data, and our validation data. Now the number of epochs, this is just for demonstration, it could be one, yeah, maybe two. We do multiprocessing, we use all workers, and I think this is going to take now some time. No train data is found. Yes, because I did not execute the cell. My mistake. So here we go. Come on. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Come on. Oh, I didn't check if we have a Tesla T4 or K80. I suppose we have the, the slowest GPU as always. So train the model. Yeah, training is done only for the top layer. Remember our bidirectional layer to perform this feature attraction, which will allow the model to use the representation of the pre-trained model. So this is what we're going to do. And this is going to take 14 minutes. So this is not too bad. So in about half an hour, our model training should be done where we have the bird model frozen and we attach the bidirectional layer for the training. And this is exactly what's happening. The training is done only on our top layer. Yes, and then what we can do is we can have a look at the schema of the model that you see another time how the model is configured and how the fine tuning is going to happen. But I would say, let's give it half an hour to run this model and I will be back with you in a second. So the training now finished. And as you can see, we have now accuracy 74%. Yeah, validation accuracy 79%. Okay. Um, simple plot command. Let's have a look at the model that we do have. We have our input layer with our input. Oh, cannot with our input IDs, with our attention mask and our token type IDs. Great. Then we have the frozen bird model, which we have frozen completely over. And then we have our operational layer here, our bidirectional layer with the pooling, concatenate, dropout, dense, softmax, and this is it. And now comes the interesting part in the fine tuning part. And According to this official Keras uh, notebook, this step must only be performed after the feature extraction model has been trained to converge on the new data. So this is our feature extraction model, feature extraction here, our new data with a frozen model. And this is an optional step where the bird model is unfreeze, un unfrozen and retrained with a very low learning rate. And this can deliver meaningful improvement by incrementally adapting the pre-trained features to the new data. So what we do, we have our bird model trainable set to true. And then we have the same categorical cross entropy loss function, the same metric. And the only thing that's different that we set our atom to E minus five. And last time it was E minus three and we make the bird model trainable. And this is it. So let's do this. And here we go. You know, the model stays the same. And now we train the entire model end to end. And here we go. And while we do this, you can see I have set my number of epochs to one because it doesn't make any sense. This is just for demonstration purposes that it runs. So what we have, we have our training data set. We have our validation data set. We have both data generators running. You remember our data generator here for the training data. We have the bird semantic data generator and for the validation data. And if you want to have the function of this, you remember we have here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here, our class bird semantic data generator with the Keras utility sequence. 
And this is exactly where we had our BERT tokenizer from some pre-trained BERT base model. Then we had this batch encode plus function where we had our special tokens, our attention mask, our return token type IDs true, and we return this as a TensorFlow tensor and not as a PyTorch. So we have now that we retrain the whole model because we have now unfrozen, so to speak, this model. And as you can see here now, it was about, uh, uh, I think about, a 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes on the first run. And now that we have unfrozen the model, it is still only at 35 minutes, so only double the time. But remember, this is now the entire model end to end. So let's do this. Let's come back in about 35 minutes when this will have finished its run. You. Yeah, the next step, of course, evaluate the model on the test data set. This is why we created a test data set that when we say execute model.evaluate with our test data, we have the third category of data sets available for us to have an independent evaluation of our trained model now. And this will take quite some time. And then the last step, but yeah, last step, why not? Let's have a look at this right now. We define a function similarity where we have a set pair of sentences, sentence one and sentence two as the input to this function. And what it does is very easily, you have the data generator for this. Of course, you have just one sentence pair. Uh, you don't need to shuffle anything. Uh, there is a target included include target is false and you have a model predict command and you calculate the probability and this is the probability as you get return and after 38 minutes we have now trained our entire model end to end of course number of epochs just one but we received a accuracy of 80%, so not so bad for one epoch. Now, we define the inference on our custom sentences. And then finally, we can do the similarity of two plain vanilla sentences that you just define for yourself and you have a look. It is now the prediction of our model that this is a contradiction with an 80% probability. So women are observing something together and women standing with their eyes closed. So if they have their eyes closed, they cannot observe something. So contradiction 80%. Next sentence, next try is a smiling woman is holding an umbrella. A happy woman in a fairy costume holds an umbrella. This is neutral with 89% where I would say, well, happy and smiling and fairy costume, holding an umbrella, similar, but you can see this is the result of our prediction model. And then soccer game, multiple males playing, some men are playing a sport. It is an entailment with 97%. Oh, wow. So definitely leads a lot of more training but I mean, remember we'd have just one epoch. So of course the training of this model is definitely not optimized in any particular way. So let's sum up our idea. We have our model. We have a BERT, a TensorFlow BERT model, a pre-trained model we take, and we want to fine tune it for some semantic similarity of two sentences. So we freeze this model. This model has an input ID. This is the word tokenized as an integer value. We have the attention mask as a tensor and the token type IDs as a tensor given the positional arguments. We have then an operational learnable bidirectional layer. We have a pooling, we have a dropout, and we have a dense layer with a defined uh, softmax function. And then we do the fine tuning and training when we unfreeze our bird model we recombine it with uh, uh, far finer granularity 
for our Atom Optimizer. And then you just train it another full-fledged version. So here we go, and you see this is about 2300 seconds for the whole uh, model, so not too bad. And you get this results, exactly what you were looking for. The similarity of sentences, the semantic similarity of sentences predicted by a bird model without the application of specific sentence bird models or S bird models, as I call them. I have quite some amount of videos on S bird, but this is the classical bird way. And we used a lot of Keras, we lost a lot of TensorFlow. And maybe you are interested in the PyTorch version, but I can tell you they are quite similar. They have different utilities, they have different strength, they have different um, accessibilities. What I would like to use is, for example, here an XLA compiler for our linear algebra operation. Maybe I'll show you in the next videos. But I hope you enjoyed it. This was it for today. A very short practical example of semantic similarity with BERT implemented on a te TensorFlow 2 platform with our Keras. This is an official, official Keras notebook provided by Keras. I leave you the link in the description. And we achieved our task given two sentences. Our model calculates the semantic similarity of two sentences with BERT. I say thank you for watching and I see you in the next video.